Hello, how's it going? First off, just to let you know, if you want to come and play on the things in the museum, even the new thing that we're going to be talking about today, as well as where the organ's at and such, then the next out of season open day is the 29th and 30th of October, it's the last weekend of October. I'm going to be doing another video in the next few days about the plans of what's going to be happening, changing around stuff in the out of season times, because we've learned a lot about how well the museum performs here, there and everywhere, what can be improved and stuff. We'll have a chat about that in a little bit. If you've been, then please comment below any ideas and stuff you'd like to see in the next time around because in between November and the out of season open days at the end of December, we're gonna do have a quite a bit of a change around. There's gonna be a lot of uh, moving and stuff. So comment below any ideas and such if you've been and stuff and if you haven't well if you want to come at the end of October then please do it's only a week or two away and you can play on the organ and play on this anyway let's have a look at what we're going to be looking at today so this is what we're going to look at today it's a little display I put together for the optoelectric section in the museum it is based on this optical display that was bought in by hack modular hack modular has already done a video on this the link is below so I'm not going to go massively into detail about this specific item because I suggest you go and check out his video on it. It's an absolutely amazing display. It's called an inline digital display unit. The serial number uh, 601-64. Possibly it's a 1964 item. However, if you can tell, if you look around the back, it's based on incandescent bulbs. Oh yeah, I've noticed I've just soldered, I've soldered these backwards. So what happens is these go into their own lenses around the back of the digital display. I keep on saying digital, that's because it's called that. Sounds a bit odd right now. But um, when you push this button, we'll have a look at this switch in the start. What happens immediately is... The lenses shine onto this piece of plexiglass and get shown as a display on the front. If you watched the live stream on making this uh, about a week or so ago, you'll see that this was used. This is a very old uni selector. I'd say it's probably 1920s. It's been stored r possibly quite roughly because all of the contacts were quite, are still quite um, high resistance, which means they're a little bit dirty and stuff still. So hopefully after a bit of use and a bit of oiling and a bit more use, it will really start coming into its own because right now, it's a bit rickety. However, if we take the lens off, this is when it gets cool. I'm gonna turn the light off. So we're gonna go into the dark now. I'm gonna lift this lens off and bring it down onto it. You can see, uh, if you look inside, you'll just see the lens is lighting up. That's just crazy, isn't it? I still need to get the voltages right on the bulbs. So what I did with the bulbs was I accidentally got the voltages wrong. Um, and I've got some new bulbs in there. These are specifically 24 volt bulbs and this is a 24 volt uh, uni selector. So uh, this is all running on 24 volts. But it's fine for right now. The amazing thing is, is you can take this lens off and actually shine it onto a bigger lens if you really want. So what we do is we get a bit of a translucent plastic in my case, but you can use a bit of paper and stuff and you can pop it in front of it. Look at that! So if I hold it onto a number and then we can pull, pull it forwards. You can see, oh, 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 missing it. If you could see that, that is, it's actually working. It's actually working really well, like that zero, to the point that you can vaguely see it on the wall behind us. The Mr. Ons. So not knowing much about lenses, but these lenses seem to have a long throw of focus. I don't really know those words. I pulled out of my derriere. So if you saw the live stream on this, you'll see that I sort of made it up as I went. I felt that it was probably the only right way to do this. There is obviously, this keeps on falling down. I'm gonna have to get a bit of glue in that. 
so how it works is we have a organ switch on this side. The amazing thing about this organ switch, as I showed in the live stream, is it has an ability to be switched on and off remotely using, elect using an electrical pulse. You see on the top and the bottom, there are coils, magnetic coils, like in relays and solenoids and stuff. If you put energy into this side, it will cause this uh, to attract this bit of metal up and it will go boom. And if you put a bit of electricity through the bottom one, it will cause it to attract down like this. Boom. Well, I've kind of wired it in a way that it works out to be like a sprung switch. But instead of it being sprung, it's actually, well, electromagnetically sprung, if you see what I mean. So when you flick on the switch, what happens is it causes a contact at the back. That causes the uni selector to flick over, and we'll talk about that in a second, but it also sends a bit of electricity into this bottom um, magnet, this bottom electromagnet, so that means when you take your finger off, it'll have enough oomph to actually attract it downwards and flick back down. So what the way it's flicking down is not using a spring or anything, it's literally just being attracted back down with the electronics. And it's within the rating, so it doesn't get hot, it doesn't heat up, because obviously it's rated for this amount, but... So like I said, the organ switch then causes the uni selector, watch this, when I push this button, you'll see that this part on the uni selector pushes inwards, and then when you lift it off, it lifts it open and starts going flickety flickety flick flick. Well, how it works is the all of these wires are connected together. They get wired into the interrupter. If you've seen, check it out on the live stream, you go into more depth. What the interrupter is, is a switch in here that causes the uh, uni selector to turn itself off. It pushes forwards like this, and then when it releases, um, it goes to the next step. But because the next step is actually wired into itself, it causes it to flick forwards again and it will just keep on spinning around ultimately until you stop it or turn the electricity off. But what I've done is I've actually cut it so it only forwards for the whole duration except for one pin and then it stops. Oh. And then what you need to do is you need to use the switch to manually flick it back forwards to keep on spinning around like so. In Hack Modular's video, he uses a uni selector which is triggered by a relay, I think, so it goes around continuously. I decided to do it like this because it only requires electricity and it's only running when somebody comes over to it and pushes the button which will be poking out of a protective plastic front which will be sticking out here. And in the next video, hopefully, by the time we'll be talking about the future, like what we're going to be changing around in the museum, hopefully this will be set up and you can see it in its kind of protective display. It'll be set on a shelf and there'll be a hole right here in the plastic on the front so people can flick this organ switch and cause it to flick forwards with a little bit of a description on the inline digital display which is over here. As you can see I've started wax lacing around the back. Around the back I haven't quite done that yet but I need to wax lace and clear up this. These are the wires that go through the selectors on the uni selector to the back of the filaments and the filament bulbs which are on the back of here so they select all the different lights. As you can see, I've wired a couple in backwards, but it's, it's pretty cool regardless. So this is an incredible piece of machinery. I hope I've sort of done it justice with this rather interesting little funky thing that goes clickety-clackety. In the end of the day, this display is a bit of fun that adds a bit of extra education and visible movement and stuff to showing you what this thing does. And if you want to play it, well, you can come on the October dates or any of the other dates or back in season when it's open regularly and open every week. It will still be running and it will still be coming because luckily it takes standard bulbs. So let's say if a bulb goes pop, we're not in trouble. We could just swap them because they're just uh, are just Beretta sized uh, ones of these. I can't remember exactly the type of light bulbs, but they're right here as we can see. Obviously I've already printed the mounts prior to making this. They're very kind of custom to this, so I'm not sure how much use they are to other people, but if you're interested in these specific mounts, then let me know. Uh, I've got a few of these organ switches. I thoroughly recommend if you're interested in interesting things, looking for some organ switches because yeah, they turn themselves on and off. 
how cool is that is to have, the, to have switches that turn themselves on and off we're going to be looking at automated organ switches uh, when we build the console for the organ uh, so if you want to see information on that stuff then go and check it out anyway go and check out hack modulars video on this uh, thank you very much hack modulars this is amazing and i really hope that people are going to be interested in looking at this anyway i'm sam this is the funky monkey machine of 3000 of the of the world of zog and yeah anyway i'm going to take this over to the museum and in the next video hopefully you'll see it set up and yeah come if you want and have a have a lovely time.